Welcome back to the Mandarin Blueprint Podcast. I'm here with Robert. Robert has kindly agreed to do a case study with us and talk about his experiences on the Mandarin Blueprint method. But before we get into the course, let's just talk about uh, why you even wanted to learn Chinese in the first place, Robert. So maybe you could introduce yourself and, and uh, explain the circumstances that led to you deciding that of all the things you could do, uh, you decided to learn Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, my name is Robert. Um, I am from the U.S. I don't know how many countries Mandarin Blueprint um, caters to, but uh, I'm go back and forth between L.A. and New York, so I'm not really right now with COVID and everything. Um, I'm a musical theater actor um, and singer, and I also uh, write a fair amount, but I just really like learning as a hobby. Um, but uh, the reason in particular I wanted to learn Chinese was it was kind of a, honestly, it was a spur of the moment thing. Um, I was hanging out with my best friend like a little over a year ago, and he said he wasn't very happy with his job, and he I was like, well, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I always kind of wanted to be a pilot. And I was like, all right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a bet. And the bet is going to be this. We're going to race. And the first person to either he has to um, get all the requirements he needs to be a licensed commercial pilot mm. and, and learn Spanish. And I have to learn Mandarin, Russian, and Spanish all to like conversational fluency. Oh, nice. yeah. That's and I, I, yeah, yeah. I watched a lot of James Bond movies in the weeks leading up to that. So that's yeah. kind of all the reasoning that went into that. Um, but <laughs> anyway, he's about finished his classes. So I, and he just needs his flight hours now. So I realized I kind of needed to get my rear and gear and um, <laughs> really nice. kind of figure out the fastest, most efficient um, well-designed way to do this. Um, and I've never really been good at learning languages. Like I, I've taken like maybe like 13 or 14 years of Spanish all through like my years of schooling. Um, mm -hmm. and I can like barely like buy something mm -hmm. at a grocery store or, but, and like, despite like having like that sort of like ability to just wrote memorize as an actor. Um, mm -hmm. but I, because of this bet, I really wanted to um, find, like, like I said, like the best, most efficient kind of like uh, just the the best way to learn a language that kind of takes into account like the newer techniques of like meta learning that we've recently sort of discovered. Um, like those, like I listen to uh, I don't know if you listen to the Tim Ferriss show mm -hmm. at all. Um, Sometimes, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so he he talks a lot about uh, meta learning and like he and Josh Waitzkin have done a lot with like um, language learning. So I, when I was looking around, shopping around for um, courses, you guys just kind of like popped out immediately. Like, um, like he talks a lot about like the 80, 20 rule about how like 20% mm -hmm. uh, of the words are 80% of the frequency. And if you learn those and, and you guys right. literally like in your introduction videos talk about like uh, you can learn 80% of Mandarin, but like just these characters I'm like, Oh, well, that's, they've really figured this out, like down to the bone. Um, mm. And you also, you guys talked about uh, like uh, utilizing um, the, the flow state and space repetition software and stuff, which is like all exactly what I was looking for. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of, I, I didn't really try many other than you guys. Uh, yeah. Like I tried Duolingo, but it was just, it was rote memorization and it yeah. did not like it at all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I jumped in with you guys and it, I couldn't be happier. Nice. Um, nice. So that's, that's very interesting. So one of the things that sticks out to me about that, well, first of all, it, you being an actor it must be an interesting experience doing our course because of course we use a movie metaphor for learning the characters so setting the scene and casting calls and you know picking your props and stuff like that must feel very yeah. natural to you um so you know i i i have a couple more questions about like your journey into you know learning mandarin but i want to just ask what's that experience like for you and how like quickly did you pick up on what we were trying to do and like because a lot of people they're very skeptical at first they're like what is this all about but as an actor 
how was that you know mm -hmm. when you sort of realized how we were setting up learning a character yeah yeah no i was it was so it honestly it took me by surprise when you guys were uh first talked about the hansa movie method in the um in the videos i was like all right a memory palace there's like my my only tie to that is that one episode of sherlock and I, so i was expecting like this just like one like very large mansion in my head and like all the verbs are in the kitchen and all the nouns are in the <laughs> yeah. bathroom and yeah. i was like well i don't know how that's gonna work but um it ended up just being really fun um like picking actors and and then getting to like tweak like their like their little facial expressions and and mm -hmm. um i found for me that the the most challenging and also most rewarding part of it is is finding the most resonant way in each of the um scenes i kind of treat them as sketches because they're so short that it's kind of just like beat beat payoff yeah and then um but anyway the, the most resonant way to like sort of drill the meaning of it into um my short and then long-term memory mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah yeah Did I, so, I, mean, the question? I imagine do you have any uh, like extra sort of things that you add to it naturally from your acting experience? So like, you know, you might, um, so for example, I never imagined that there's actually like a director there or there's actually like a crew or anything like set up around the set. Do you, do you ever imagine that naturally since that's your experience? You know, because of course it could be that. It could be that you are in a big movie studio or something and then they, they set up the set, which is the bedroom of your childhood home. But like, it's like, you know more in a in a set type of way or on a stage or something like that is that ever something that you naturally did i'm just curious i mean i'm not usually unless until we get to like the character about like making a movie like i just learned uh what was it um to sit uh tool yeah um my my zoo is uh zoolander so he's like setting up a film studio um yeah in the backyard yeah, nice. yeah um but uh, like i do get a lot of fun out of like uh using like different movie sort of editing techniques like like close up on the eyes like very intense or <laughs> yeah. uh like a montage or or um like you know like that scene in jaws where the guy's in the chair and then like all the, the background um like goes that and like oh the, right like yeah the, yeah doing that in specific is like you zoom out while you're rushing toward and i like do that sometimes for like realization sort of right right oh like, yeah uh, yeah sure yeah, you can, yeah, yeah like in uh her to uh to know i do that uh -huh. with um shia labeouf and a woodpecker that sings if only if only the woodpecker size oh nice um, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what's so fun about this method is that like it can get really like silly sometimes and but mm -hmm. also oh, yeah. in yeah, it can be silly, but it can also be like really intense. And, you know, you, you forget mm -hmm. how often directors and, and producers, they try to come up with ways to um, create emotion visually because it's, so, the, you know, I guess they have, they have music, they have audio as well. But since they don't have the tactile element of real life, uh, when you're watching mm -hmm. a movie, they have to use different visual tricks to, to get um, emotions to express themselves. But like, we're all about, okay, try to see if you can do something like that with your mind because your mind mm -hmm. has an unlimited budget. So you can, yeah. whatever you want to try is going to be mm -hmm. fine. Um, so yeah. you don't have to do 700 takes of anything. So um, nice. Well, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So let's, mm -hmm. something I'm curious about, since you're doing it kind of like on this um, sort of a challenge with your friend, um, mm -hmm. which by the way, have you already, uh, where are you in that? Have you done work with, I mean, you said you've learned Spanish in school, mm -hmm. but like not so well, mm -hmm. but like uh, when you're in school, but what about Russian? Have you started Russian yet? Or are you have not started Russian at all yet. Um, I, I figured I'd start with Mandarin because I figure it'll take the longest, yeah. um, especially the first. with like, you gotta like, you learn the opinion and then you learn the characters and then like there's, mm -hmm. there's like that extra step there um mm -hmm. but i feel like I, I think especially with like the method of learning with the mandarin blueprint method mm -hmm. with like building uh bottom up and then also working top down i can sort of apply those principles to mm -hmm. russian and spanish once i've sort of um integrated them through learning mandarin um sure so like i i can talk 
decently in Spanish. I figure two or three months and I can kind of knock that out. But um, yeah, haven't touched Russian at all yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could do this thing called laddering, uh, which is where laddering. Yeah. It's where you learn the third language from your second language. So like if you were making flashcards for Spanish for the vocabulary, you use mm -hmm. the Chinese as your like answer on the flashcard, for example, like if you're oh. trying, you know, so you go, um, I, I don't know many Spanish, I don't know Spanish, but like, if you were to like, take like a word instead of whatever the Spanish word is for, uh, like, yeah. you know, banana, uh, yeah. maybe it is, maybe it is banana. I don't yeah. know. Um, you banana. would just say you would have xiang jiao there as opposed yeah. to banana, you know, just as an example. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like but, comer uh, is to eat. So like comer and then crew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah totally. Okay. So that's really cool. Have, My friend's going to be so mad that you told me that. Yeah, yeah. Just, awesome. you know, I, I want you to win the challenge. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, it's in my interest that you defeat him in his, even though yeah. <laughs> if he's really good at pilot, <laughs> at his pilot school, I mean, what am I going to do? Um, but yeah. uh, <laughs> so, okay, let's suppose that, you know, you, you're you successful, you get to the point where you want to, uh, you're, you're able to speak Mandarin and maybe also Russian and Spanish conversationally, mm -hmm. but let's just focus on Mandarin. Uh, do you mm -hmm. have any intention to apply it to any areas of your life? Is there any anything that you'd like to do with that? Or is it just purely a challenge with you and your friend? Um, I think for now, it's like purely a challenge. Like I, I get very impatient with things. So I'm not really, I'm doing my best not to focus on when I know it. I'm just kind mm -hmm. of trying to like keep my head down and, and just never have like a zero day and just push myself to like the limit of, um, my learning ability and like the speed that I can and maintain my momentum. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that um, like the, the way that just globalization is acting in the world, it'll become more and more relevant for people to um, speak both English and Mandarin um, mm -hmm. and especially having an understanding of both cultures would be really Absolutely. helpful just in life yeah um so yeah and and so i'd like to and and i'm getting that a lot from uh this course already um understanding just like the way that uh the language is structured um having like rather than like like those sort of like confucian ideals built into the assumptions of the language where like the subject is a host and the object is the guest mm -hmm, where there's mm -hmm. like that respect sort of thing yeah. um yeah, so I I hope that I can use that in some way. Um, don't really know what it will be yet, but um, yeah, yeah. and I'd like to go to China eventually, whether it's like on a tour or or just for fun. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and also uh, in New York City, where like I was before the pandemic hit. Um, everything is so much cheaper in Chinatown. Sure. So yeah. I could save a lot of money by just like getting all my groceries in Chinatown. And <laughs> yeah, I would sure. like to do that in Mandarin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I, w I was in uh, New York City for the first time since learning Mandarin. Uh, I think this was a couple of years ago now. And my, I was with my friend uh, who actually knew a little Mandarin himself. Uh, he just sort mm -hmm. of like some basic Mandarin that he had learned like 20 years ago. Uh, but he... Mm -hmm. um, was like let's go into this pharmacy <laughs> and i was just like okay yeah. and so he uh he just got me talking to the lady there and i got into a conversation with her about uh politics within like two minutes and like it is Oops. it is pretty fun like there's yeah. pretty because they're just everybody's like oh look yeah. at this guy yeah. Yeah. so yeah, um, yeah that can be pretty and you cool. get to do the thing i've always wanted to like have like hear someone like gossiping about me over there in mandarin or, or spanish or something and then like once they're done, they've had their fun. Then you like lean over, and say like one hundred dollar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah, that's happened. Uh, it's yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah, you see, you you hear them yeah. talking about you, and you're like, you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. All right. talk them in a minute. I actually, there was yeah. a story um, that I <laughs> that's kind of the opposite of this with a friend of mine that I always thought was really funny, which was that. Mm -hmm. um, my well it's, it's funny and, and kind of well you'll see but like my friend yeah. and his roommate were having uh, a, like a big party one night when they lived in Beijing 
and uh, mm-hmm. they had a bunch of people over their house and looked like you know loads of beers and like they were uh cleaning up the beer bottles the next day and uh there was a their neighbor was out in the hallway and um his roommate said to him oh i bet she hates us for how loud we were last night and then <laughs> Uh, my my friend goes yeah but you know Chinese people are so loud all the time and like they're always you know making so much noise and whatever and then she just turns around and just goes like it's just that we have a small baby and so you know we were hoping oh. you could keep it down. and my friend was just like oh, oh no <laughs> oh that's so bad and I was just like yep you just you lost that one completely <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no i've had those moments i mean i what i have a lot is um like just last night i walked into a, a gym to, to mm. get it because i just moved so I, i'm looking for a new gym membership and i walked in and i said to the lady at the front desk i was like hey can i check out your gym and maybe have somebody uh tell me what your gym's all about and then a guy she calls a guy over and, and like as soon as he sees me he's like oh oh so do somebody come over like like as if he needs somebody to speak english <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. and then uh you know you just go like hey could you tell me about your gym you know uh and then you're just like oh okay and so you can see the relief <laughs> it's it's more like a yeah, relief yeah. on their face in that case where they just go oh mm-hmm. good like i don't have to find somebody and have this broken english conversation for a while so uh mm-hmm. that you know that's mostly what you get day to day although i i it is fun when you hear somebody like talking about it but here mostly what they're talking about and what still amazes me despite all of the world events is that like the other day i got into a car uh a dd um uber uh and the driver was you know usually these days people aren't like amazing there's a foreigner in the car but this guy i don't know maybe he was from the countryside or something and he was like really excited that i was in the car and he was like where are you from i was like i'm from america and i was i've always been wondering over the past four years whether or not people's attitudes are going to change towards me being an american mm-hmm. and uh yeah. he was just like you're from america it, everybody there is really rich right america's number one <laughs> number one country and i was just like <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i was just like uh, dude like, your country's fine <laughs> but yeah. uh, well what like what is like the literal translation of America? It's it's something wool, like something kingdom. Maygul. Like I know beautiful country, Maygul. beautiful Maygul. country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. May Gwol. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like May is in beautiful, <laughs> and then Guo is in kingdom or, or country. So May Guo. And I was yeah. like, I always thought, I've always thought that that will make you know whenever you. I have an association with the character May because obviously it's not mm-hmm. just America. There's many usages in the language, and I see mm-hmm. it, and it is a beautiful character in and of itself. But it's also you know it just has this association with beauty, and I always think like China would have a lot of trouble like convincing. I mean, I, it wouldn't be too much trouble, but like it's like there's an association with this character that's so positive that I feel like they would have mm-hmm. a lot of trouble being seeing America as this like you know major enemy because they just be like it's the beautiful country how can we have yeah. a problem with the beautiful country but you know it's yeah, honestly really, really like basic. all the other countries not beautiful this is a beautiful one. yeah it's the beautiful one yeah um yeah. but uh yeah so anyway all right well let, so let's go a little bit into the course and your experience getting going through the yeah. course so uh did you do the pronunciation course first of all i did yeah yeah that what, was what were your so thoughts helpful. on pronunciation mastery oh my gosh okay um well, like my biggest thing that I was worried about uh, in learning Mandarin was like, how am I going to learn this language when they don't have an alphabet? Because I had mm. no idea that Pinyin existed. Mm. And then like I started the pronunciation mastery course um, because you guys recommended it. And thank goodness you did because it is the best idea ever to start with pronunciation. Mm. Um, and that like just that one module like sets you up for success so well. Um, Cause like, even like from the very beginning, like within like a week, I just for fun started like watching, uh, like Mandarin language shows on Netflix, just like, nice. Just, just start the immersion early, I guess. Sure. Um, and also cause my sister likes watching them and now she has somebody to watch them with. Um, but like immediately I could like start picking out, uh, like, like slight differences in dialect and, and, um, like literally the first week I was watching uh, a show and they were uh, using the, uh, I forget exactly what it's called, the, 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 the R, like the, the Northern Beijing dialect. Yeah. So, and I put like, it like, oh, that person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Um, and so I like pointed out, I'm like, that person's from Beijing. How they, how they get all the way down to Fuzhou? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like wherever it was taking place. And my, my sister and my parents were just like, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, like yeah. It, it just, it sets you up in like such an amazing way. And it's, it's like this pronunciation mastery course. It honestly, like for anyone listening, take it, take it, take it. Even if you already think you can, you, you no opinion can pronounce it. The um, course is so amazingly helpful, especially the videos that talk about like tongue positioning. Mm. Um, Cause like when I do like, like I sing and when I voice lessons, we talk a lot about like tongue position. So like I found that very helpful for me, just like the difference between like uh, who and two. Like like raising the tongue up to the roof of the mouth and just and and just it makes such a huge difference, especially oh, yeah. in, like both in making the sounds and also knowing what to listen for, mm-hmm. like the the slightly uh, like airy cushion that comes with having that raised tongue or or um, sort of like the back of the tongue dropped back more. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it. it pronunciation mastery course was so helpful in that respect you know i always say this to people but uh, i learned a lot from that course because you know obviously luke yeah. planned it out and uh mm. i had the our story is that like the reason why we're such good partners is because he sort of started with pronunciation and focused a lot on pronunciation and spoken and i started off learning characters and then we like mm-hmm. met and combined powers and like start, i started learning stuff and because i edited the pronunciation mastery course i like would he'd say something and I'd be like I definitely didn't know that um <laughs> you know, and so I'd, I'd be like that's, that's good so my pronunciation improved so I'm like ever since then I'm like obviously everybody should take this course because yeah. you know even if you've been learning Mandarin for many years um I've never met anybody as a foreigner who has pronunciation as as solid as Luke's you know um mm. I've I've heard you know it's it's like I've met print um people who had at various points, I mean, Luke's got great Mandarin, but I've met people who's mm-hmm. like spoken Mandarin is more fluent, but that's mm-hmm. not the same thing because their pronunciation wasn't necessarily perfect. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. perfect. That's the other thing too, mm-hmm. is it like, but still Luke consistently on the phone gets mistaken for a native, you know? And it's like, I probably oh, wow. have too much of an accent to get, I mean, occasionally I do it. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, every now and then, uh, somebody will arrive at my door, like a, a, a guy who is um, delivering me something or going to pick up a delivery. And then I'll answer and he'll be like, wait, this guy must have the wrong house. And I'm like, no, it's <laughs> so, but it, with Luke, it happens all the time. I was just, you know, I hear him mm-hmm. speaking and I'm like, you know, I can't, I only know it's you because I know your voice. Right. But like, mm-hmm. it's it, somebody else, you know, they, they wouldn't have any idea that it's not a Chinese person. So he's a great yeah. person to learn from. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, okay. Okay, so that's cool. So you did the pronunciation mastery course, <clears throat> transition into phase one. So phase mm-hmm. one, we talk about uh, learning characters and components through this wild mnemonic method called the Hensu movie method, where we break down a character into all its parts, because there's only a certain amount of things you need to learn for a character. You need to learn the components, you need to learn what it means, and you need to know how to pronounce it and with what tone. So we assign, we map those different elements onto faces, places, and objects, and then how they interact is what the meaning is. So um, when you got into this, what was your experience of moving into that? Were you skeptical? Um, and, you know, how did that, how, how did you, it, as it was developing, you're watching these different videos, what was that experience like? Um, I mean, I, to be honest, I didn't really come in with, uh, any expectations um, I only kind of like knew what I like hoped it would be and like I said before I was uh, skeptical a little bit just slightly about the memory palace thing but that was because I didn't understand memory palaces mm-hmm. um, so like that completely dissipated um, but uh, sorry can you give me the, the prompt yeah I'm just, just like as you were going oh, yeah. through the phase one you know sort of videos and all of that and you know you're you're getting a sense for how the method works at what point did you i mean because one of the things that happens for a lot of people i'm not saying this definitely happened for you although you have gone to level 14 is that they realize that it works and that it's going to be um 
you know, something that if they keep doing it, they can just keep learning characters and eventually they'll know enough. So, you know, how was that? Did you find that you became confident in the system after a certain amount of time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like honestly, like within like a week of starting to learn characters, I just like, it, it kind of became like methodical and I just felt like I could do it like anywhere from like 10, it takes like 10 seconds to like two minutes anywhere in like that window mm -hmm. um, in order for like the scene to sort of like constellate in my head and like all the line parallels to be drawn that need to be drawn in order for me to like remember uh, all the aspects that you mentioned of it. Um, and so like, it, it was honestly like that first week of learning characters, um, like I meditated a fair amount. And so like, I just dropped into flow that one time. Then like, I woke up an hour later, I learned like 20 characters, like that's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, since then I've been able to just like go back in and, and learn characters, make these movies. And then I like, and then I get like rude awakenings when I start, when I'm like, all right, let's review Anki. Oh, I have 200 flashcards to do today. Cause mm -hmm. I got so overzealous with learning new characters yeah. that I need to yeah. like. Well, that out. can happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a good yeah. feeling. I think it's a good when you go, oh, oh geez, yeah. I've done, I've learned so much that there's so much to review now. But then, you know, mm -hmm. it's like it, what I find with Anki is that because Anki, there's one of the things you discover with Anki, especially as you're getting into sentences, is that uh, you can find ways to fit Anki into the cracks of your day. And if you're in a particularly mm -hmm. motivated headspace, um, then you can kind of, you know, I usually do a big study session in the morning uh, when I was, mm -hmm. you know, really into Anki, but I'd also, if I didn't quite finish in that study sesh, I'd be fine with that because there's always these mm -hmm. moments during the day, especially with sentences. Like, it's like, you just have to figure out what's the missing character and like try to understand mm -hmm. the sentence. And, you know, you can have your focus sentence study where you're like trying to uh, listen to the audio and, and maybe even shadow mm -hmm. the audio. But then you also have your speed reading study where you're like, turn the mm -hmm. audio off and just, just try to read quickly and go through them. And you can get like five or six flashcards done in the elevator. So it's like, oh yeah, um, you know, that, that, can be pretty cool there when you get, when you get that going. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to comment real briefly on the flow state thing. Cause that, yeah. uh, one of the things that I've sort of discovered about that is that, and I, I do, a, I do a daily meditation as well, is that it's mostly about just, um, accepting, like, it's sort of like there, the Tao is about recognizing the difference between the fact that everything is happening to you but you're also making everything happen. So like in the sense that if uh, it, it is your, like, so the sun creates light and your eyes have to interpret, but it's not light until your eyes interpret it as light in terms of experience. So your eyes yeah. are making it happen in a way, but obviously the sun isn't you. So it's like, it's, it's happening to you and you're making it happen at the same time. And when you're in flow state, you're right at the center of those two things. And yeah, so- Yeah, yeah. You yeah, you were both the, the process and the processor. Right. And so like, that's what happens with these scenes is that, you know, you follow mm -hmm. the steps and but your brain starts to fill in naturally what is so it feels like it's almost happening to you. But you're of course, you're making it happen because you're consciously choosing to go into your set and your room and you know, all of this stuff. But there's so much of it that just kind of see, feels like it happens of itself. So it's this mm -hmm. really cool process, you know, and that's, yeah. um, I, I found that to be something that, and of course, flow state is something that never stops applying to your life as, mm -hmm. you know, time goes on in the sense that um, no matter what you're trying to do, flow state is pretty much all, always the ideal state of mind to yeah. be if, you're, if it's an attempt yeah. to like, you know, learn something. So anyway, I just wanted mm -hmm. to comment on that because uh, I, yeah. I like, I think about that stuff all the time. Um, oh, constantly. <laughs> So how long on average do you feel it takes you to learn a character now, especially if you're in that flow state, you know, yeah. state of mind? Uh, um, well, it kind of depends on how abstract the word is. Um, sure. I mean, sometimes things will just like jump out. Um, like I think it was uh, the, the, what was it? Uh, do, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, like belly. Like mm -hmm. that one just like jumped out because like my prop was a pot of soil and uh the moon mm -hmm. and uh scooby-doo was my actor and so i just had scooby-doo eat the moon 
fall back on the pot of soil it breaks underneath him and then he's just like rubbing his full belly with the moon yeah. in it <laughs> doing yeah. like yeah and so like and what what and room it, and, what room was he in uh in my bedroom my childhood bedroom okay yeah got gotcha all right cool nice yeah uh, it's like, um, like i immediately remembered that so that's good yeah yeah, yeah. um so that's <laughs> just like that that took like seven to ten seconds for sure. that scene to just like happen um, oh yeah it takes way longer to explain the method than to do it oh yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh so much longer yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but then there are like uh, other ones that are just seem so much more like like really really vague um sure. abstract words that take sure. a lot of yeah there's a lot of characters out. where you're like this is not a concrete concept like this isn't like mm. apple or something you know what i mean so yeah, it's like yeah. you have to yeah it's, it's yeah. something like from oh okay, yeah from uh, that's what this character yeah. means so all right yeah. <laughs> you know so it's, yeah, but yeah. you can there's always ways it's just you gotta dig mm. a little bit deeper but that's what the special effects mm. are about it's like trying to yeah. help you oh, and the script triggers we call them but yeah yeah mm. Mm. yeah nice all right, so that's a basically like sometimes it's as short as ten seconds, and then sometimes it mm -hmm. might take a few minutes depending on how yeah, yeah. Uh, you know complicated. So you know, like a, probably a minute usually per long, average. Yeah, yeah. Usually no longer than like a minute and a half or two minutes, and that's when I'm really just nitpicking of like, well, that doesn't really fit exactly. Which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like usually I could probably just like let it go, but yeah. I like making things perfect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, How about um, yeah. the flashcards in general? The the, the mm -hmm. annoying setup and frustrating user experience of Anki aside, the actual experience of the flashcards. How does that? How do you find that in terms of helping you remember what you've learned? Oh, it's so helpful. Oh my gosh! Like, uh, I I think you guys in your explanation video of space repetition software, something like ninety or ninety five percent retention, mm -hmm. um, and that's those are the results I'm getting. I mean, I'm getting close to like 97%. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I usually do it on my computer. Um, though I do have the Anki app. Um, but like, yeah, the just sort of the way that it's set up um, and the customizable nature of it, especially I, I enjoy a lot, like finding images for the, like the compound characters, mm -hmm. the, the words. Sure. Um, even though sometimes it can be really frustrating, like figuring out like how to differentiate um, the difference between uh, the word that means like, uh, oh, what was it? Think. I just learned it today. Uh, was it uh, xiang maybe or? Um, uh, uh, maybe. It, it was a compound. It was, there was like an introverted version and an external version, and they both mean opinion or idea, but then one also means perspective. Oh, yeah. Xiang fa and kan fa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, yeah, and they are similar. similar. They're similar words. Yeah. Yeah. But I was able to sort of figure out like one, one seems to be a little more like internal. One's a bit more like uh, mm -hmm. communal communication sort of. Yeah, thing. exactly. Like, like, it, it, you can actually that, look but... at the characters and see how that works. Right. Because so mm -hmm. Xiang Fa is it's the, it's so thinking method, right? So it's kind of like how your opinion that comes from your internal, uh, you know, processing of the situation versus yeah, kan fa, yeah. which is how you view a such can means look so it's like how mm -hmm. do you view the situation which is similar because mm -hmm. obviously you can't view a situation without thoughts but it's like yeah. it's kind of when people will use kan fa more in like you know uh looking at the uh, situation in the middle east uh, what's your kan fa about that whereas like what's yeah. your perspective there whereas it's like uh what's your opinion about um how to better yourself or something like that is more like a xiang fa. It's like kind of, mm -hmm. it, it's subtle, the differences. And the, you know, what the more advanced we get with developing the course, the more times I go like, oh my gosh, like we can't, you have to emphasize to people that there is a point, especially like you're not quite at this point yet, but there's a point somewhere in maybe phase four where mm -hmm. you have to be like, if we went down every little tributary and explained it, it's a fool's errand because yeah. your brain will naturally figure out these connections as long as your foundation is strong. But mm -hmm. my goodness, if you wanted to go into it in detail, you could find a million different 
small, subtle differences between words that your brain mm -hmm. will just figure out if you immerse yourself. And what we're trying to do is get you in a place where when you immerse yourself, you have the most light bulb moments, right? Because mm -hmm. like, if there's no way, it, it, like practically speaking, to stop for every little subtle detail and be like, hey, by the way, this is, uh, and you'll use this word when you're a little bit tired and you've, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of irritated. And then this mm -hmm. word you'll use uh, that is a similar meaning, but you'll use this when you're in a good mood. It's like, yeah, but you could do that with so many situations constantly. And mm -hmm. our brains are evolved to handle that anyway, unconsciously. So, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're always in that battle because we want to help people when they have those questions. But on the other hand, we want to be like, don't just overanalyze the language to death yeah. you know trust yourself trust your brain yeah. but yeah and mm -hmm. you're kind of getting into that now in phase three by getting into sentences but yeah so sorry you were saying xiang fan can fan finding images for the two yeah yeah um and uh yeah like like i mean and also like finding the images and sort of like figuring out the differences but like what the diff the the specific meaning and differences between the two helps me understand the words better as well which um sure. is a real asset in like the in reference to the customizable nature of the Anki flashcards, um, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. honestly it, and that's indicative of the course as a whole, I think, because it's very geared towards uh, like autodidacts, people who like teaching themselves. You can take it at your own pace. You can kind yep. of do it in the way that you want, um, but all the tools you need are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's that. That's the goal. We just want people to be able to like, it's like, it's there, it's ready. It's, it, you know, we're constantly building on it. Uh, and so the idea is that if we just set up the framework, then you can walk through, it's a, it's a blueprint, right? So it's like you can, or a map is, you know, another way to think of it is like you can, the map doesn't tell you how quickly to walk the trail. It just tells you what the trail is and like, don't go that way, you know, go this way. And so, but whether or not you're walking or running or, um, you know, skipping, it's all fine. Um, yeah. so hopefully you're skipping and smelling the daisies. Um, yeah. so nice. All right. So next sort of area about this, it's interesting that I want to ask you about is kind of, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but as you get into the vocab, we've recently kind of updated our vocab mnemonics lessons where we give some more suggestions around that. Uh, it's relatively new, but I know that you just finished level 14. So you must've seen some of them. Uh, what was your experience of those new types of lessons where we give more, suggestions on what we call living links which are basically just ways to uh remember a two character word mm -hmm. um yeah are, are you talking about the vocab in context specifically or or no, the, the living the, um, links specifically the the living links part of it i'm kind of just going okay. through phases so phase one phase okay two, yeah, so, yeah yeah right. <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I find them really helpful um like honestly when i started uh learning the the compound characters um i didn't pay very much attention to the living links mm -hmm. and then i had to go back and be like oh those are very useful and those are very helpful i need to pay more attention to those <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so um they've been really really helpful we it, they sort of stand in for the um the hansu movie method like the way they are for like single characters the living links are the sort of mnemonic for uh compound characters yeah, um yeah. And that, you know, the reason we do that, by the way, is that, you know, individual characters, they're two steps away from context, right? So they have to, you have to take the characters and then you have to make words out of them. And then you mm -hmm. put them into sentences, which is real language. Once you get into sentence sentences, you're talking about input, comprehensible input, mm -hmm. which is the, the bread and butter of language acquisition. But the, pro mm -hmm. the, the reason why the hands of movie method must be more systemized is because if you're two steps away, that means if you were to individually translate each character, it wouldn't make any sense. So like, for mm -hmm. example, um, I was just thinking about this the other day. If I were to say, uh, woman, that, mm -hmm. that would be I plural, uh, no path. Um, or per, like, here's another one, um, uh, Tommen. Uh, hun kaisin. Okay, so he plural, uh, very open heart. Maybe you can come up with something out of that. But if you go word by word, you go mm -hmm. they very happy. 
and you go, oh, okay, that, that, oh, that's okay. easy, right? And so yeah. what you do at the word level where you have two characters, we say kaishin, okay, this is open heart and it means happy. It's not that hard mm -hmm. to come up with a, it's like, okay, that makes sense. If your heart mm -hmm. is open, you're more happy. So mm -hmm. can we come up with a little mnemonic to remember that? It kind of has one built into the characters. Kaishin, mm -hmm. kaishin, does it sound like anything? Uh, kaishin, that kind of sounds like, like cash in uh or like you know something like, or when whatever, i get paid like, i'm happy yeah, yeah 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 cash in made him happy right <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. and so that's sort of an example of how you and i just you know that you just witnessed me sort of figuring it out in the moment because that's all you have to do well everybody mm -hmm. can do that though it's not special yeah. to me you know, sort of. um and so well, we're you are trying to get people that. yeah what well, 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 <laughs> we're trying to get people to recognize mm -hmm. that the the vocab layer doesn't have to be as precise because mm. it's only one step away from seeing it in context. Because once mm. you can see something in context, then you have grammar and uh, you know the other language around it to help you understand what it means. So if you mm. see a paragraph of text and there's one word in it you don't know, you probably don't need anything else to remember to learn what it means because the rest of the paragraph is surrounding it and mm -hmm. it you know gives you the context necessary to figure out what it is so we're just it's a stopgap measure before you know enough um context to be able to uh remember the character or the word and the characters for long enough so that when you do have enough context you can just learn that way so that's why the yeah. foundation course focuses a lot on these vocab mnemonics and then at the intermediate course we we drop that as a requirement we give it as an option mm -hmm. but in the intermediate mm -hmm. course we say now you know enough context and you can read enough that you should be able to figure out a word's meaning just by seeing it in context and if you mm -hmm. really need to you can add some images and living links to the sentence cards but um only if it's giving you a lot of trouble so um yeah. you'll get to that soon um, yeah eventually. <laughs> yeah so let's um talk about the elements of the course that are more sort of the the living aspect of it so we have you know comments we have a community forum um mm -hmm. you know we have the podcast and uh the way we you know we'll respond to comments with loom videos and stuff how has that um affected your experience of the course yeah uh i honestly i haven't used the community forum very much yet i like mm -hmm. looked uh around it a bit or browsed a bit but like um and it seems like it'll be much more useful later on okay. um also people are really nice there it's so it's yeah, so fun yeah yeah it's really it's surprising um, but I, i'm glad yeah yeah but people are uh sharing like um and like when i said it'll be use, more useful later on a lot of the stuff that goes on there it seems in the forum specifically is they share uh Re outside resources to like read and for like immersion and people are uh sharing like um links to like mandarin episodes of peppa pig and and yeah, um yeah. websites with like graded uh hsk graded reading um yep. like i think it'll be really helpful later on um that aspect the the mm -hmm. forum aspect um but sure. now like the comments are very helpful under the videos um, for learning um, characters and uh, deciding on who I want for actors and whatnot. Um, that's been, yeah, it's been really helpful. Like I've completely plagiarized scenes from sure. the, the comment section of borrowed actors that I like, oh, I didn't think of that, but that's perfect. I've watched that whole series seven times. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's also been really helpful um, being able to like write in stuff there. Cause just if I think for some reason, like I, I have a scene and I like it, but I like it enough, I'm not gonna change it. But if there's a chance that I think I might forget it, I can just write it down there. And then it's there for me to remember it. It's also there for other people to see it. Um, right. So yeah, the, that community aspect has been really helpful. In, in those ways awesome awesome so um yeah like I, that, that's definitely a side of it that we're um thrilled has worked out as well as it has you know we we you know it was just one day i thought what if we just responded to everybody with um 
you know, if it's an easy answer, we'll just give them a quick sentence or something. But what if we talked about everything on a pod? Like that was the conceit of the podcast in the first place. We were just like, well, let's just answer people's questions on the podcast and then send them a link to where we talked about it on the podcast. And mm-hmm. um, that seems to have successfully triggered people to uh, engage more because it's just, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, that that's kind of the best way you can get a response is somebody gives you a, yeah. a video response to your question. So I think that people mm-hmm. like that and it's worked out pretty well. And uh, it's just, a, yeah. it's great because, you know, Luke and I um, have a bunch of ideas, but we're, it's like not even close to the amount of ideas that the whole community can create. So it's like uh, every day when we see, you know, 50 comments come in, they're all like, you know, 40 of them are just people making suggestions. It's just like mm-hmm. this good, like warm feeling like, ah, oh, the course is growing stronger. It's growing yeah. stronger. I like it. <laughs> <You> know, <so. laughs> um, nice. Uh, okay. So any suggestions for how we could improve the course areas where you're like, this is not clear enough, or, you know, they, they could add this thing that would make things a lot mm-hmm. better. Any, any areas there where we could, you think we could improve? Um, honestly, I, nothing really pops into my mind. Like the, the main, like language learning aspect of it, like all the, uh, optimizing, uh, meta learning and, and all that is, is in there. Um, I thought I, I'm like, you gave like a, a questionnaire thing and I prepared just to make sure I didn't blank on things. But like, I, I had one idea where like, maybe if you have time, you could make like a mini module sort of thing of like the differences between the Chinese worldview and like the Western or like English one. And like how mm-hmm. Confucian ideas impacted like the social structures and, and influenced the development of the language. Cause like, I'm trying to map Mandarin onto English. And I think we talked yeah. about this a little bit a few minutes ago about how like that doesn't really work all that well. Um, doing it like literally, um, like he plural heart open is mm-hmm. like kind of a, they, they're, they're much more, I guess, poetic in like the way that they view things. Um, yeah. And especially like now that I'm getting to the grammar section of it, um, like their grammar is rearranged in like a much more direct way. Uh, and I think it'd be really helpful, at least for me to understand the sort of cultural expectations that kind of underlie that um Mm -hmm. expectation of directness um in the same way and and i think that same gap in knowledge like applies to like the heightened reliance on context that you find in mandarin versus english but i mean i honestly i couldn't think of anything else so that might be significantly off track i think it naturally happens happens as you get uh further into the language um but Mm -hmm. you know certainly cultural elements are things that we would love to add in you know things Mm -hmm. i mean we try to when we can if we notice something and we there's a way that we can mention it we'll you know throw it in especially since a lot of our podcast responses end up on the course so if somebody Mm -hmm. asks a question about something and there happens to be a cultural anecdote hopefully it'll end up on the course so it's um but but yeah like that's um Mm -hmm. it's something that you'll start to get it's because there's all these different elements of society that have managed to uh infiltrate their way into the language you know i had this um chat with a a friend of mine who's a very strong uh, strongly opinionated um uh, american guy about you know lots of different political things and uh Mm -hmm. he's got kind of radical views on stuff so i love talking to him he's a really smart guy and uh we were talking but you know we were talking about china and um I was talking, he was kind of portraying China in this very like flippant, uh, and he's lived in, Be- mm. he lived in Beijing for a couple of years, although he didn't learn the language. Oh. Um, but, and I, I, I was in Beijing with him at the time, uh, but mm. he uh, was sort of just like kind of, what do you call him? Belittling China's culture to the point of like, just saying they're just X. And I'm not oh. going to get into specifically what oh, he said, yeah. but I yeah, kind of yeah. was like, they're just this okay what about you 1. know 3 billion people are just this. yeah 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 it was a bit it was a bit yeah. flippant on his part you know yeah, it's yeah. just what people do sometimes but mm-hmm. uh and he's a very smart guy so i'm sure that it was yeah. just a lapse but like yeah. he he kind of i said like well just like just take the influence of taoism on the country alone like that alone mm-hmm. is uh gonna be you know a massive influence now i'm from an area that's probably more influenced by taoism than other places because uh the it's Chengdu is right near the birthplace of it but um you know the the 
Taoist influence is a huge thing. And he goes, well, how many Chinese people are Taoists now? And I went, yeah. oh, so you think that the influence of a religion is only the number of people who consider themselves members of that religion. Whereas like, I look at it and I go, I know the language and I know how much Taoism is, is inherent in the language. And so it's like, yeah. it's not like you have to be a, uh, a Dao Jiao Tu, a um, follower of Taoism, who's like reading mm -hmm. the books and, you know, going to the, um, uh, temples and that type of thing to be influenced by the the culture of Taoism, right? And so mm -hmm. that's yeah. something that the all these things sort of fill fill in gaps for in people's minds. You know, I, I, my um a couple of my foreign female friends the other day were chatting, and I didn't, I never thought of this. This is my uh, this is my maleness coming out, but like they were like, you know, nobody ever cat calls here. Nobody ever cat calls in China, and I was like, really? oh. Oh, wow. I mean, I, but the yeah. thing is, I was like, they're right. I've never seen that yeah. in 10 huh. years of being here. I've never seen cat calling happen. And I was like, and they, they were kind of joking because they call uh, Sichuan women, um, la maids, la maids, so spicy girls. And it's because, um, well, first of all, Sichuan men are like shorter on average than the rest mm -hmm. of the country, like, like Dongbei, uh, Northeast, they're like quite tall and they're more closer mm -hmm. to like Western height. Um, but you know, I'm, when I get in the subway, I'm always the tallest person. I'm six one. So I'm a little bit taller than average by American I mean, standards, you're pretty tall. but like, yeah, yeah well, you know, it's, it's a six one's kind of tall, but in, in Chengdu, like on the subway, I can always see both the front of the subway and the back of the subway. There's nobody blocking my view. And so, yeah. um, but, and then the women are particularly beautiful compared to the rest of the country in a lot of ways, you know, Chongqing as well, this whole region. And so like, they kind of wear the pants in the society a little bit, at least in, and so they call them the la maids. So the idea is that if there were, if there was some cat calling happening uh, in Sichuan, they'd like get slaps. <laughs> it, was kinda, it was pretty funny, but that, that's the kind of thing that I went, oh, that's definitely an influence of maybe some mix of Confucianism and Taoism that Mm -hmm. this would not be the type of thing that would happen. Whereas, you know, you imagine like, I don't know, Italy or a construction site in per certain parts of the U S it's like, that's just sort of yeah. second nature. It's like, it's, you yeah. know, um, like if it doesn't happen, it's weird. Right. Right. And so it's, a, yeah. but it just never occurred to me because I'm not a woman. So I just didn't ever think yeah. that like, well, no one's cat calling me, you know, but it, from yeah. their perspective, they were like, this is great. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. So final question for you about the manager mm -hmm. blueprint method uh, which is just, you know, if somebody is looking for a, a Mandarin learning resource and they asked you, uh, would you recommend Re Mandarin Blueprint? Oh, a hundred percent. Absolutely. It's like, I was going to say it depends on who's asking me, but it honestly, it like fits, it fits with everyone. Like no matter what way you learn best, like whether, whether you like teaching yourself or whether you like following instructions or whether you like reading um, like a textbook, like you can do any of those paths following the Mandarin Blueprint method. Um, and, and it's also, it's fun. Uh, you, you get to be really creative, which is fun for me because I like, and just ge a generally creative personality. Um, the whole thing also, I think this is really important in terms of it being fun is like the whole thing is sort of gamified. Like mm -hmm. I, like, I mean, because of my situation with my bet with my best friend, I'm trying to do it um, kind of more quickly. Mm -hmm. So I get to like watch the bar on the side. That's like, all right, 602 videos in this phase. And it's just slowly moving that way. And then one day I'm going to get there. And it's going to be so great. <laughs> um, yeah, and nice. like, yeah. And so like all those aspects together, um, it like makes you forget that it's supposed to be the hardest language to learn. Right. Because right. it's just like, it's fun. It's a game. It's, it's creative. It's enjoyable. Well, that is a ringing endorsement, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, of course. appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, it was a fun conversation. And um, yeah. if anybody is interested in checking out more about Mandarin Blueprint, just head over to mandarinblueprint.com and you can learn more there. Thank you, Robert. And of we'll course. Uh, see Thanks you on for the having course. me. All right. Cool. Bye-bye.